This is Brian Houle, a Solutions Consultant with Beyond 20, and today I want to talk about creating repeating remind email reminders in ShareWell Service Management. Today I'm working in the 5.1 version of ShareWell, but this can work in the 4, version 4 as well. In essence, what I want to do is, when a certain condition is true, I want to repeat an email reminder for a certain number of times at a certain frequency uh, until that condition changes. In this case, when an incident or uh, when a ticket goes pending status, I want to send an email notification to the ticket owner every day for five days. After that, I want to send one notification to the owner's manager for escalation. So let's have a look at how I might do that. So going into my admin tool, I've added two fields to the incident object, the incident business object. A pending reminder count field, which is just a numeric field, that keeps track of how many times I've um, iterated and uh, sent that notification. And the second one is a pending reminder date. And what I do with this is I uh, calculate the next time that the reminder has to go based on a fixed um, interval. So here I've got the pending reminder count and I'm going to go into validation. What I've done is set up an auto populate on the status that set to, it sets it to zero every time status changes. So the idea is if it comes out of pending, it goes back to zero. If it goes back into pending, it goes back to zero. Um, if it you know, happens to come in and out of that condition. Now looking at the pending reminder date, I'm also auto populating that with a condition. Um, again, auto populating when status changes. So if we go in and look at that, And what I'm doing here is um, I've got a case statement that says if the status equals pending, which is our trigger condition, I want to calculate the current date time plus one day. That's important, so we'll, we'll keep a track. We'll keep track of that um, because that calculation is important, and we want to run that calculation. Essentially, set that um, set this field every time we iterate through the reminder. So here we're just doing it when status changes, but you'll see how we run the one step later. So that's that. Let's go into our one steps and have a look at our notification. So this is all run through a single one step pending status reminder. And so what I'm doing is every time this one step is called by an automation process, which we'll look at in a second, let me edit this. What I'm doing is updating my pending reminder fields. So my pending reminder count, I have a simple expression to increment that. And also I'm running my expression here, again to increment my date. So every time it runs, it's going to change that value, and that's important. And that's pretty much all there is to it. So I have a condition here to send it to the ticket owner um, if it's if we're one through five on our count. So if we're less than six, um, that's when that runs. However, if we are more than that, if we're greater than or equal to six, we're going to send our email to our owner's manager. Okay, so let's go into our business process. or automation process. And have a look at that pending reminder. So here this is all run off of a single automation process, pending status reminder. Let's edit this. And let's zoom in a little bit if we can. All right, so we trigger when the status changes to pending. And we're going to do this on a 24-7 basis. I'm going to limit records to open incidents only. And I'm going to run this as many, any number of times, but I only want to start it if it's already running. Now, with these kind of re repetitions, having, a good, um, having good abort conditions is key to prevent a loop. So obviously we want to close it if the incident is closed. But then I've also got a number of abort pending reminders. So obviously, if it's greater if our reminder count is greater than or equal to six, we want to abort. If our pending reminder date is empty for some reason, uh, we want to uh, prevent a loop 
and so we want to abort under that condition as well. And of course, um, if we're tracking male history, so what we want to do is I just have an aggregate count on our journals relationship for um, journal type equals male history. So if I generate more than 150 uh, male emails on this uh, or email journals on this incident, we're going to abort as well because that means we've got a loop there. We don't want that either. So that is our abort condition. And then all we're doing moving on is um, we're checking to see if the status is changing from pending, you know, if it goes into back to in progress or resolved, um, we are going to end our business process. Um, so that's the event. Our time limit is our pending reminder date. Remember that. So we initially set it um, when the status changes, but uh, each time we run our pending status reminder one step, which we just looked at, as you recall, we're setting our two reminder fields here. So we're updating our count and we're also updating our reminder date for one day from when that one step fires. And then finally what we're doing is we're just going to jump back to our wait for time or event. We're going to wait for it to change from pending again. And if it uh, changes from pending, we'll end. But again, if our conditions are right, if we haven't reached our maximum number of reminders and our abort conditions haven't been made, well then what we'll do is we'll run the one step again when our time passes. Now remember, we've updated pending reminder date, so it's not static. It's changing every time this one step is running. And so that's what's creating our productive loop there. Okay. And what ends up happening is we have a set of Close out of that. But what happens is um, we get our set of reminders. So if this ran over the course of six days, say a week, and an incident ticket was impending, for each day we would get a pending reminder. And then finally, on the sixth day, we would get our escalation email to the managers, or I'm sorry, to the owner's manager. And that's how we create a repeating email notification based on a certain condition. So thank you for watching and subscribe to our channel for more ShareWell videos. Thank you very much.